Hello and welcome back to another video in our Upstairs Archive series where we're going back in time and showing you some of the work that we did upstairs in the house. Wow, it is very windy outside today. If you're not sure why we have to go back in time to show some of that stuff, uh, it's quite a complicated story so I'll put a link to a video where you can learn a bit more about that. The short version is we had another channel, we don't anymore. People were asking for us to republish some of that old content and so that's exactly what we're doing. Now, where we left things in the previous episode of this series, we just discovered some of the rotten lintels in the bathroom and realised that they needed to be replaced. How is that even supporting <laughs> no. anything? <laughs> no. This is going to have to come out. But we weren't sure how to do that, so we procrastinated a lot and did a bunch of research to try and work out how best to go about this. We bought some lovely oak beams and Kylie did some great work to clean them up and make them look amazing. Also during this time, it became clear that we had made a big mistake with some of the line pointing that we'd done. So we had some comments on the last video, not necessarily outright telling us that we did something wrong, but kind of questioning the color of the lime that we were using. They said, hmm, it's a bit gray, shouldn't it be lighter than that? And so then I looked at the bag again, and there is one very important letter missing from the label on the back of the bag. When I went to the shop, I asked for Cal Hydraulica Natural, Natural Hydraulic Lime, NHL. And they showed me a bunch of bags that said Cal Hydraulica on it. And I went, yes, perfect, fantastic, thank you very much. It's all they had. Um, and we wanted the 3.5 strength, not the five strength, but we took what they had because we needed to crack on with this project. And it turns out what we actually have here is hydraulic lime, which is, from the research I've done so far, and I do need to do a bit more research, is an artificial product that is supposed to mimic natural hydraulic lime. I haven't been able to find an ingredients list, but there is a chance that it actually contains a small percentage of cement. White cement, I think, is typical in HL5, which is what we have. And so... We're gonna do some more research just to clarify, but there is a chance that we might have to take all of this off, find the right product and put it all back on again. So now we're all caught up with what's been going on. Let's get to the slightly nerve wracking business of replacing lintels in a stone building. They're, they're very thick nails. It's a good day to be working inside. What are you doing? Taking out the plumbing. Yeah, very good. I thought we were doing lintels. You are. Yeah. <laughs> I am making this a work safe area with new things sticking up everywhere. Well, safety is important. Safety. It's quite big. <laughs> Say that about a lot of things. Like the project. Deck, the project, <laughs> not that. Come on. You hold your end. I'm holding. I'm going to move mine into place. Okay. Just put it 
about teeter because I just want to double check that it holes so it's in any way, shape, or form straight. Because <laughs> mine isn't. Straight is uh, it's relative. Yeah. Um, I suppose it needs to go across a tiny bit. Yep. One person can be up on there. Yeah. Pulling out rocks, handing to the other person. Same with the lintels. Can get it onto here and then get it onto there and then slide it in. <sighs> this is starting to become quite real. We have been putting this off for quite some time. Uh, we're very nervous about this one because we've never done one of these before. We've done a lot of research. Um, and it just seems crazy to pull down, I don't know, how much is that, a foot? A foot of stone to take out a lintel that's supporting a building to put in another one and then put the stone back again. But... That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So you know when I was talking the other day about um, the different kinds of old mortar yeah. that they use. This is, I think, this is just earth. Yeah. An earthen mortar. Yep, I think so. So earth with a little bit of tiny stones in it. Not even lime added to it. I mean, lime was used way back, but maybe... Not so much for laying of stone. It was okay. used more as the finishing material, okay. which is what we have on those walls. But this is just clay. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can show you in the light. It's clay with tiny little... Uh, pieces of, I mean, it's crumbling in my fingers. It's well, just, yeah. that is what is holding our house together. Oh, this scares me. It really scares me. I mean, look at them. They're, they're I mean, they're not, just sitting there. Doing anything at the moment. <laughs> I mean, we don't need to take these out now because no. we're going to do this so these, when we've got a full I mean, day. even that, right, is moving. It's, yeah. Crazy. Okay, so that that one is jammed in. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow will be not tomorrow. The next day. So welcome back. It's day two on the lintel project. Big day today. We are hoping to replace this lintel. Uh, we've set ourselves the task of trying to do one per day and that gives us one extra day to um, pick up any slack or resolve any issues. And so that we are prepared and we have everything that we need and all of the uh, safety equipment that we need, um, that is what we're going to be kind of starting off with is just kind of getting all of our ducks in a row, making sure that we are ready so that as soon as we start taking stones out of the wall, we're ready to get some lintels in and put the stones back as soon as possible without rushing, making sure we take our time and are slow and steady. And so one of the things that we need to do for that is to mix up some mortar so that when we're ready to put the stones back, we and, and when we're ready to bed the lintels into place, we've got something ready. We don't need to then go and stop and mix and, and wait for that to be ready to go. And so that means we need to mix up a new batch of lime mortar. And whilst the process is gonna be quite similar to what we've done in the past for the pointing where we used the incorrect HL5, we've got a new product and it's a different way of mixing. So I'm gonna to get to that. And uh, maybe Kylie will explain a little bit about what this uh, new way of working with lime and this new type of lime is all about. We are not using NHL, we are not using HL, we are using quicklime. So quicklime in Portuguese, Calviva, we have it in powdered form. We wanted to get granules, but we couldn't. Now, I've done, some would say, way too much research regarding lime. 
Uh, I've read a couple of PhD papers, some white papers, some historical records, a book on hot, hotline mixing. Um, I've had many people send us information and references regarding... Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> regarding historical practices. Um, so shout out to Jacques who sent me a reference to the hotline book, which I have read. It's excellent. Um, and after all of that, we have decided not to use NHL. Um, this is the traditional way with the traditional ingredients that would have been originally done on this house. And so we have gone to that because it's widely available and NHL is a little bit more difficult and it's more sympathetic to the building and it's from the reading that I've done, it's the more correct product to use. Four stone. Four stone buildings, yes, for this very specific type of house. And that's, where, that's what it would have been done. And so we're going to go back to that traditional way of doing it. What happens is this is what's called dry slaking that he's doing at the moment. And he's mixing the lime with the damp sand. And the lime reacts with the water and starts to create a chemical reaction. So we will mix it, then we will leave it for three to five minutes uh, to allow that reaction to finish. And then we will add, slowly add water. Uh, and that water also then starts a chemical reaction called slaking. So it's kind of a, the first, the first one is a dry slake, which just takes the moisture from the sand. And then we'll add the water, which will create the most of the reaction. Um, and then you basically just turn it and work it for until it gets this really creamy um, pasty substance almost um, and you can almost put it on a trowel and hold your trowel upside down and it should not come off it's a, it's a really flexible uh, material to work with you leave that for 20 minutes or so to let it fully finish that slaking process and then you can actually use it either hot and allow it to cool down a little bit to warm or you can let it set overnight um, and then use it the next day cold. Um, we will probably use it in a more warm because we're going to mix it. Then we're going to go and start taking the stones out and then whenever we're ready, we will start using it. And I don't know if Kylie mentioned because I was quite focused on my task, but the reason that we're wearing all the PPE and taking this very seriously is because uh, this quicklime is a very, very caustic yeah. substance. Um, it, so if you get it in your eyes, it's very, very bad. If you Even breathe in it, your skin. If you breathe it in, uh, it's very, very bad because it, it creates a really, really strong chemical reaction with water. Uh, very, it generates a lot of heat. That's one of the reasons we're doing it in here on the uh, concrete tile floor. The reason we're not doing it outside is because we can't control the elements like wind and rain, and it is and it is raining today. Um, but we've got windows open, we've got all of the all of the gear on. We're being very careful, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's important to mention. The ratio should be of a two two, hi parts, two, lime. two parts hydrated lime, so after all of the water, to three parts sand. So this lime, uh, quick lime when you add the water to it, so it's one part powder at the moment, once the water is added, it doubles. So that becomes two parts lime to then three parts sand. Um, similarly, if you were going to use a lime putty, which is the hydration part is already, the chemical reaction part's already done, it should be two parts quick lime, sorry, two parts lime putty to three parts sand. And there's lots of variables, there's lots of experimenting for us to do. We've done lots of reading, but nothing beats doing it in practice and getting that learning. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll probably try a variety of different methods, different methods of mixing. Uh, we're also going to try and slake some of our own lime and make our own lime putty as well. That'll probably be a separate video. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. We'll catch you in a bit. It's going to go in a bit of a time. There's a chemical reaction. Is it bubbling? That's encouraging. <laughs> it's doing what it does too. Oh, 
that looks really nice. So we've got a nice cream in there so it's nice to have, but we didn't have before. Do you know what happens? I don't know, you read the book. <laughs> <gasps> So the plan is to take all of those stones out onto this platform. We will be kneeling on this platform and we'll put all the stones in a nice, neat, organized pile down here. I've swapped my respirator for a hard hat. I'm terrified. <laughs> Slowly and carefully wins the race. I think you might be right. Not that this is a race by any means. <laughs> I love your double hat situation. Oh, I hate the hard hat. <laughs> I'm just getting started. Yeah, go for so. it. I'll stand back from a safe <laughs> distance watch. and film it. I'm just going to clamp this up here so that I have my hands free to help. There's just dust in there. Well, no, it's just a lot of the mortar that's in between all the stones. You just, you just kind of crumbles away when you put it in the corner, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is the kind of stone you use. That's a picture of a rock that just broke it off of my hand. Yeah. Well, now it's. This is um, another another reason why we need to use the softer lime because the sand, the yeah. stones are quite soft. Yeah. Or, very interesting about that is it, it doesn't look like there's a whole bunch of stuff that is being held up behind. No, it's just, uh, we just need to excavate this bit. Yeah. And these are, ex this is screwed up into this. Yeah. So that's holding everything kind of above it. Yeah, I don't know about the next, the next one, but we'll come to that later. <sighs> Good work. Yeah, we just, uh, this bit I'm pushing back is just mortar, it's just yeah, it's clay just mortar. Dirt. <laughs> Dirt, yeah. It's definitely. holding it together. We're going to get comments about how you always do all the work again. I'm doing this work because when Guy does destruction, <laughs> he goes hell for leather. <laughs> this requires a little bit more patience. Yeah, I don't have much of that. <laughs> so I think taking them out won't be the problem. I think it's going to be a massive problem putting them back, uh, especially if we want to use these big ones, because what looks like they happened is they put a bed of mortar down, they put the big rocks on top of it, and then they fill from on top to fill in all the gaps and whatever, which we won't have the luxury of doing. So we'll see. Know. Most of it on this arm here. Okay. Ready? Yep. Oh. Oh. Shit. Yeah, it's that's, just heavy. It's <laughs> a big rock. I don't know, we're gonna get that back up there. Uh, carefully. Yeah, carefully. Wow. Okay. You're gonna take all the weight in. Mm -hmm. oh. I got it, I got it. Yeah? See, that's why you're here. Yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do that. <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It's just awkward yeah. from above. Oh, everything's awkward up here. Yeah. Cool.
Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Let me just. Yeah. Won't fall on your head just yet. <laughs> just. <laughs> okay. Come on. Come on. Yep. Like that. Yeah. It's on my arm. Yep. I got it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> look at that mess. Yeah, look at that mess. Doing a quick look at that rotten piece of wood there. The lintel is out. This is actually really quite flat in terms of being able to sit our lintel on here. Yeah, we knew what they were doing 200 years ago. So small bed of mortar here to really make yep. it flat. Nice. And that'll go quite nicely. And then this is what's left of the wood. Yeah, that was supposedly holding up this part of the building. Jeez. I'm very glad for this though, this wall plate. Yeah. The, joist plate, whatever yeah. we're going to call it. That has saved us. It has quite saved some. a lot of work. We are now out. Good and work. Now we can make a plan for replacing. Replacing. I don't look forward to putting the big stones back. Is that it? Yeah. All right. That should be the Instagram of the day. It's a bit fiddly getting this piece of oak in, but we're just going to take out a little bit more of the stonework. Now I have it. Okay, just put it on there and balance it, and then shuffle it along. Yep, and then up. Okay, my way. <laughs> yes, boys. It's a bit. Yeah, well, we're going to bed it down. Yeah. So, is that protruding enough for it to get a decent. I think so, because I'm going to feather it in. So, I think that's okay. Yep. Can you give me the tape measure? Yes. 16, 17. Okay, that's plenty. 170 mil. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. So here's a view from the underneath. We've uh, sat this oak lintel proud so that when we uh, do the lime plastering up to it, there will be a little bit of it sticking out and then we can kind of feather in the plastering uh, so that this edge is all exposed. This will all be visible as well. Uh, for our board behind, we're going to bed it down on a couple of uh, old tiles to raise it up so that when we plaster onto this, Again, we can have the oak here visible, but this will be plastered over, so we'll be putting some mesh or something up there. This is the right orientation? Yes, it is. It has to go more your way, so go down and in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then can you get your pencil line? Oh, bear with me. Yeah. Yes? Can I let go now? Can I go down? Yep, down. Not, this way. not that way, the other way. But that's what it's going. That's what it's going. The other way. It's a... Uh, it's Back uh, the window to, or not? No, it needs to come down on the front. Is it? Yeah. Oh, that was a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks amazing. Oh, so worth it. So glad that we first of all restored the lintel. 
Yeah. Uh, but so glad to have replaced that lentil now that we've pulled that out. It's much worse conditioner than I thought it was. Yeah, it was crazy to see the, uh, the, the one that was there originally. And also this lime, it's like frosting a cake. It is so sticky and smooth and silky and lovely. And it takes a really long time to cure as well, which means you have time you can to come back it, and yeah. rework it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not thrilled at the idea of having to replaster this entire house, which mm -hmm. is what we are going to do. It's a lot. But I'm at least looking forward to working more with this material because it's very nice indeed. Um, so that is the end of day two. We have day one two, down. Day one. What day is it? Uh, one lintel down, one more to go. Uh, let's pick this up tomorrow. <coughs> so here is my bucket of mortar that is left over from last night. I had it covered up with a hawk and at the bottom here, you can see it's still really, really, really soft. Um, preventing the air from getting in here has uh, allowed it to be workable because this, this is an air setting mortar as opposed to how I incorrectly described our HL5 as an air setting lime in a previous video. This one is. Okay, so we've been starting to put some stones back, uh, just kind of testing out the approach more than anything. Done a bit on this side over here. What I've been doing so far, I think is a little bit overkill compared to what was there before. Um, I don't think there was a huge amount of stone work on this kind of back half here, mostly because what was supporting it was not very um, substantial. I think most of the, the stone needs to go in this front area here. Um, but I'm starting to get a bit of a feel for it, which is good. But essentially what we need at the end of the day is to support these, I'm going to call them wall plates, but there may be a proper name for them. Um, these supports here, which are underneath the uh, the joists, the ceiling joists, um, that's where we need to put the stones and kind of pack in underneath here, uh, so that when we take the props out eventually, when it's all dry, uh, there's no movement or as little movement as possible. Okay. I have it. Okay. Oh. Oh. I will try not to. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. You know what I was thinking? I was going to drop it on my toes. Okay. That is a bit too far out, I think. Twist it. Okay. I'm trying. Okay, and that piece there, what if it was upside down? Which piece? The piece that you were just touching. This big one? No. This um, one? Yeah, so that that uh, piece that's currently in your left hand was going up into that right hand corner. Yeah, let's try. I'm pretty sure this is the way around that it was, but we'll see if we can spin it. We need to gym. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going anywhere. exciting quite pleased we're gonna let that go off overnight and probably probably gonna leave at least some of the props in place for a while just so that it sets and hardens it does take a while because it's this um, co2 carbonation air drying hardening and then hopefully move on to the next lintel tomorrow
Good morning and welcome to day, we'll just call it Friday because I've forgotten how many days we've been working on this project now. Move the scaffolding into place to do the next one. I'm hoping that this is going to be largely uneventful. So we're going to set you up on a time lapse so you can enjoy watching us work. Um, maybe put on some nice relaxing music so that you can just sit back and chill out with us. Of course, if anything interesting does happen, we will be sure to show you so you don't miss out. So let's see how we go. temporarily I thought I would show you this this is a similar construction to the other to the other side although these uh, there were two wall plates on this side over here there's just one and this bit is okay but uh, this bit isn't great and this bit is even worse so we are probably going to put a um, uh, an extra piece in here and attach it, uh, screw it into these joists uh, just to, to hold anything that we pack in above. The next up is to remove these guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll pause, I can hold it, it's fine. Do you want them so that the, the bottoms are down? Yeah, down, that'd be great. So that we, yeah. we get those ones. Okay. Ready? Tip it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh. That's heavy. So that bit looks okay. The end is not so good, but this end is even worse. <laughs> done with the second one. It took a lot longer than the first one because the rocks go all the way up to not just the joists but the uh, floorboards above. So I'm a bit tired but it's looking really nice and so I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up and I'm gonna have something to eat because it's almost four o'clock and I forgot to take a break since uh, nine o'clock this morning. Um, just been going at it to get this done today. Uh, so yeah, gonna go and tidy up, 
have a bite to eat and then I'll bring Kylie back and we'll do a big reveal. You want to see something <laughs> nice? <laughs> you finished my bathroom? Yes. <laughs> At least. Or well, one part of it. Uh, yeah, my lentils look good, huh? <laughs> they are looking nice, huh? Yeah, really makes the bath, the toilet, you know, sets off the color scheme there. Sorry, I just have to check for alignment here. Oh, I had to take out a whole bunch because they were too far out, but I think now it's okay. Yeah, it looks good, huh? This has been months in the making. Walls are our next thing, whether that's the stud walls or getting a first scratch coat on these walls. To do the scratch coat of plaster, we need to take off all the HL5. So if you would like us to do an episode on how this building is constructed and how we're getting around, for example, that there's no damp proof course and why we've made the decisions we have regarding lime and everything we've learned about lime, Please do put a comment below, leave any specific questions that you have about the building, lime, etc. And we'll try and address those in that episode as well. So I've uh, learned many things about lime and uh, it's been some good practice working with it because we've got lots more to do and lots of plastering, some proper pointing in the future, many things to come. And of course, we'll, uh, we'll keep the videos coming. We'll show you what we're up to and the problems we face and how we overcome them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you later.